In today's episode of Easy Publishing to the Central Repository, we're going to look at the next steps after initially creating our account and getting our namespace approved and set up as we've done in our previous episodes. So we're going to look at, as a producer, what you need to do in order to get your project artifacts published, which involves a couple of project requirements that we're going to discuss, as well as a few tips and tricks around the signing requirement that involves using PGP. Looking at the project requirements page, you will see a number of requirements listed. And let's just discuss quickly why we have these requirements. Um, they evolved over time by requests from the community. Uh, they used to be a lot looser and the namespaces and those kind of requirements uh, were a lot looser and they resulted in a lot of chaos and sometimes also in uh, components that were not of a desired quality. Uh, with the current setup, we have a compromise where everyone has their own namespace and artifacts are required to contain specific information. Uh, so let's have a look at what these are. With the central repository being a repository for JVM or Java based components mostly, but in general uh, built by Maven and other build tools, there evolved the requirement to have Java doc and sources artifacts attached. This is very useful for any users that uh, declare dependencies, for example, in uh, Maven because it allows the IDE and other tools to automatically download Javadoc and sources and hook them in to the respective project you're working in. So as a developer, you have very easy access. You don't need to manually download them. You don't need to hook them up in the IDE manually. It all happens automatically via the Maven or other build tool integration. So you have to publish Javadoc and sources as artifacts. And they just uh, published as additional source and Javadoc jar files. Um, that also applies to other artifacts and um, is quite easy to set up depending on the build tool, which uh, we'll discuss another time. Uh, further requirements are is that you need to sign the artifacts and we will inspect that a little bit closer. And then you have to have sufficient metadata. The metadata in a Maven repository is all stored in the pom.xml file, which is in fact then actually deployed as a .pom file. And there's a number of requirements there to uh, detail basically who this project is from and who is it, what's its name and so on. So you have to have full coordinates. You have to have a little bit of a description, a project name, a URL. You have to declare your license. This is very useful for any systems parsing projects in the central repository and trying to figure out license restrictions and things like that. So you have to declare the license. And in the same fashion, you have to declare some developers and the information for the SCM systems or the version control system, which allows anybody uh, that downloaded an artifact to potentially go back and check out the source and if necessary modify it or whatever, but basically know where it's coming from, which uh, points towards the open source nature of the deployed artifacts. And these POM files are automatically created and used by Maven, but in many other build tools can create them as well. So they create a suitable upload file. With these requirements out of the way, one thing that people often stumble across is their first encounter with PGP and the signing of the artifacts with that. So let's have a little bit of a look how you can deal with PGP. The dedicated page about working with PGP signatures uh, details all the steps necessary. You basically need to install GPG, you need to create a key for yourself and then you need to distribute that key so that the publishing system on OSSRH uh, can verify the key compared to and compared with the key being used for signing the artifacts that you will upload. And that's pretty much all. This page details everything, but let's see what that looks like in practice. 
First, we need to verify that GPG was installed and we can do that with GPG minus minus version or if we're using GPG2, same command um, and you'll see the different version here, 202 versus 1418. Uh, the version will depend on what packaging system and so on what you've used. This is a pretty newer version. Um, and you can install it in this case I installed it with apt-get on Ubuntu but um, any packaging system will hopefully have a PGP otherwise you have to download some package or installer from the GPG GNU GPG website once you have installed this you can uh, go forward and do the next step which is to create or generate a key all you need is a name email address and a phrase and then you can use the command here gpg gen key and in this case we'll go with the default suggestion for rsa key and key size we also stick with the default of 2048 bits which is fine in terms of the expiry you uh, could set and go with the default of uh, not the key not to expire but it's probably safer if you set it to expire after a while you can at a later stage uh, extend it again just in case your key gets lost you don't want it to be used by others so this is the secure option so you could for example here go 18 month or something and we'll this tells us when it would, would expire we agree to that now we have to provide our name um, here Manfred Moser email address Manfred at sonatype.com and then a phrase I could go here trainer or something as a comment and that would be good enough and I could say that's okay and a passphrase this should be a secure password that you remember um, but is uh, secure enough so other people can't easily figure it out and you should probably keep that password securely somewhere maybe a, a password management system or something like that and then you have to repeat it and then it goes off and creates the key and it will need some random interaction here as it mentioned so we'll just do some mouse movements and so on and that's already it. The key was now successfully created and we see here there's the identifier for the key and everything here and we can also verify the key is now stored in our system and you see here's the new key with its identifier and its sub key and everything is ready to roll. Now that we've successfully created this key that we want to use for our publishing we have to just submit it to the key servers and this can be easily done here with a command line like this where you submit it to the skskeyservers.net website the identifier for this key to use would be this string and we could publish the key and then use it um, obviously I'm gonna just delete this key again which you can also do and this and other steps like extending the key once it's expired and so on is all available on this website and of course for G GPG, OpenGPG being a very popular and widely used system. There's also lots of more information out there on the internet. But what we have here on this website here should uh, provide you all the necessary steps to be able to sign your artifacts as one of the requirements to publish to the central repository. Oh,